Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of WandaVision Episode 4, an episode ripped straight from the headlines of New Rockstars videos. In fact, uh, let's just add in here. Ah, that's better. There were a ton of details in this episode that you might have missed. I'm gonna break them all down, shot by shot. Spoiler warning, let's get started. The episode opens with now one of my favorite MCU sequences, a Walking Dead opening scene style. Hospital panic showing us the moment of the blip return. One of those snaps victims Monica Rambo rematerializes. This all occurs simultaneously with Avengers Endgame, the moment Hulk reverses the snap, and it's pure chaos. We did see a bit of this undusting in Spider-Man Far From Home when a tuba player got wrecked. <laughs> this time it's this poor rematerialized dope. <laughs> to the sound added for comedic effect. But listen closely to these opening seconds. Now, that last line is the voice of Carol Danvers, taken directly from the Captain Marvel film. When they were handing out kids, they gave her the toughest one. Lieutenant Trouble. In the comics, Lieutenant Trouble was Captain Marvel's nickname for Kit Renner, but in the MCU, it is her nickname for the young Monica Rambeau. But the lines before that suggest Monica's mother, Maria Rambeau, callsign Photon from Captain Marvel, had to leave Monica behind to be raised by her grandmother at some point. Sounds like there was a space mission with Carol Danvers, maybe connected with the Skrulls and or the Origins of Sword. Maybe something we will see in Captain Marvel 2, or maybe something that actually led to Maria's cancer later in her life. Now, the close-up imagery of Monica's part coming back together is gloriously rendered. Dare I say even better looking than in Infinity War? Notable difference though, Monica's pieces are not desaturated. They're not ashes, just like bits of her. This evokes Joe Quesada's amazing art of Wanda in the House of M comics that we think this whole show is based on. Among this chaos, we see one guy rematerializing beside a hospital bed and assuming he dusted five years earlier, he would be a total stranger to whoever this woman is. There's another patient reappearing in a hospital bed. I love it. This is all horrifying as it would be, despite the Russo saying that it was just like a peaceful return on the other side of Hulk snap. Next, sword. Sentient weapon observation response division. This is headquartered on a coastal base that looks a lot like Cape Canaveral. Shuttle launch pads and that big old hangar. It's massive. Compare that to the size of the nearby office building. This could be where sword built pieces of the peak space station, which might be where Nick Fury was in that far from home post credit scene. Since one Division is apparently set three weeks after Endgame. This would be around November 2023, and Far From Home is set in summer 2024, giving half a year or so to get that space station operational, if it isn't already. The lobby is laid out similarly to S.H.I.E.L.D.'s old Triskelion in DC. S.W.O.R.D. might have grown as an offshoot sister organization under the leadership of Maria Rambeau throughout the 90s and 2000s while Fury was overrunning S.H.I.E.L.D. On the screens, news comes from WHIH, that's the in-universe MCU news service that we saw and promos for Ant-Man. There's also Spectrum news. Spectrum is one of the superhero names Monica Rambeau takes on as an Avenger in the comics, and Darcy later tracks Monica with a Spectrum analyzer. We may be seeing Spectrum's origin story as a future Avenger in the MCU. Now, Monica wears this necklace. It looks like a small golden sword pendant. This might be what turns into the necklace in Westview. I think it's this more than the new lanyard ID badge she gets, just because it sounds like sword is her home. It's really her last connection to her mother, this pendant represents that, and Westview is kind of expressing that history now with this sword necklace that she can't separate herself from. And then Monica's met by acting sword director Tyler Hayward, calling it now this dude. He easily could have activated her ID, but instead he had her feel like an outsider so that he could swoop in as a white knight and escort her in. He clearly feels threatened by her post-blip return. He thought she would never come back. He's kind of like Brad against Peter Parker. He knows the status he has should belong to her. And now he's apparently throwing her to this assignment, hoping she will get erased from this world, I think. I mean, isn't it suspicious that FBI agent Jimmy Woo lost someone in federal witness protection, someone whose past associates claim not to know suddenly, and now Hayward is throwing his all-star agent Monica Rambeau at this? I'm beginning to think Hayward could have set all this up, like he might have made a deal with a devil. That mystery missing persons that Jimmy Woo was looking for, whom I think could be Agnes's Ralph. And Hayward did this to raise his status at S.W.O.R.D. while helping that Kaiser Soze slip through the cracks to hijack an unstable Infinity Stone irradiated Avenger to create a pocket reality where she could rest 
resurrect her corpse boo and make babies, all while that devil figure drains her of her power. But now it has blown up in Hayward's face, and he doesn't know what to do. I mean, I'm just saying, Wayward Hayward knows quite a bit about ancient cosmic radiation. My equipment registered an extremely high level of CMBR. That's Relic radiation dating back to the Big Bang. And uh, not to go too hex crazy on this guy, but the diplomas on his wall are arranged in a ring of six. If I lost it, I'm just probing a fake town with drones till something sticks. Now, depending on what time of day you're watching this video, your eyes might start to feel real tired. I know my eyes feel that way. I've been staring at a screen all day, which is why I'm so grateful for Blue Blocks for sponsoring this video. So if you're anything like me, you're logging more screen time than ever right now. All that staring at a computer or a phone makes my eyes feel real heavy and can wreck my sleep when I'm up late trying to finish a video. Turns out this is caused by the blue light emitted by screens. Blue light leads to digital eye strain and can cause symptoms like blurred vision, headaches, and eyes that are either too dry or too watery. And all this can even impact your mood and energy level. Well, Blue Blocks was created to fix this problem and block out the blue light with high quality lenses. They're made under optics laboratory conditions in Australia in line with the suggested peer-reviewed academic literature. They have over 40 hip frames and come in prescription, non-prescription, and readers. Now I've been wearing their Brooklyn computer glasses. I also have these uh, Cali Summer Glow glasses that use color therapy to combat seasonal affective disorder. Order. Blue Blocks gives back by working in partnership with Restoring Vision in their Buy One Gift One campaign. For each pair of Blue Blocks glasses purchased, they donate a pair of reading glasses to someone in need. So go to blueblocks.com/newrockstars and use the promo code newrockstars at checkout to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. Get your energy back, sleep better, and block out the unhealthy effects of blue light with Blue Blocks. That's B L U B L O X dot com slash new rock stars or just click on the link below to get free shipping worldwide and 20 percent off your order but as i was saying oh i feel so dramatic taking on my glasses as i say that the two catch up how are the numbers for the astronaut training program dismal lost half my person on the blip and half of those remaining have lost their nerve interesting sword test pilots sound like a possible setup for the fantastic four whom we know are coming to the mcu hayward says shifted away from manned missions and refocused on robotics nanotech ai sentient weapons like it says on the door it also says observation and response on that door not creation. Whoa, 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 what? You're telling me Sword was creating sentient weapons? Yeah, definitely evokes some notes of Weapon X or some kind of way for the mutants to join the MCU. And then this. The world's not the same as you left it. Space is now full of unexpected threats. Always was full of threats and allies. Monica's allies sound like her scroll friends, whom maybe not everyone will see as allies. We know from Far From Home things are about to skew into a Kree scroll war. I thought Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Nick. Then Monica meets Jimmy Woo. James E. Woo. FBI. Nice! Jimmy does some close-up magic, a trick that he learned from Scott Lang's close-up magic class in Ant-Man and the Wasp. How'd you do it, Scott? Do what? The car trick. Sir. Can you knock? Now these Eastview cops deny Westview even exists, but my question is, does Eastview exist? Were these cops expelled from Westview, their car warped, their minds brainwashed so that Westview would have no law enforcement and thus be more vulnerable to a hostile takeover? Some possible number details here. Monica's SUV is numbered 8512, maybe for the 1985 12 issue comic run some believe WandaVision is based on. Her drone is numbered S57, maybe for Avengers issue 57. Seven, the debut of the Vision. And some are pointing out that the helicopter has the same color scheme as Captain Marvel, but you know, I think that's also just kind of a generic colors. Dr. Darcy Lewis returns from the Thor movies, now contracted by S.W.O.R.D. alongside these other experts in other fields. Artificial intelligence. Hmm, artificial intelligence. AI was mentioned as one of the new S.W.O.R.D. disciplines Hayward highlighted earlier. Shifted away from manned missions and refocused on robotics, nanotech, AI. Darcy scans the radiation coming from Westview. What are you getting? A colossal amount of CMBR. CMBR is the oldest electromagnetic radiation in the universe. It does date back to the Big Bang, and it's actually the same kind of radiation that creates TV static, thus the staticky border membrane of the town. But the Big Bang connection is key, because as Wong told us in Infinity War, that is how we got these things. Boom. Big Bang sends six elemental crystals hurtling across the virgin universe. 
Remember, Wanda's powers were activated by one of those Infinity Stones, the Mind Stone. And this whole universe just went through four shockwaves of that same kind of cosmic radiation, which could all be connected to this new anomaly. Hayward sends Agent Franklin to find Monica via the sewers, showing how we got our beekeeper. Wu doesn't like the plan. There's no reason to suspect the perimeter doesn't extend subterraneously. There's no reason to suspect it does. Yeah, Jimmy Wu is saying that the pocket reality extends beneath the surface. Another sign that this Hellmouth might be coming from below. The town perimeter is the shape of a hexagon, confirming our paranoid suspicion about all the hexagonal imagery. It really may just be that this whole town is a hex by Wanda, a spell. Darcy cues up the sitcom feed, confirming that she was that note taker watching at the end of episode one. Look, I know it's been a crazy few years on this planet, but he's dead, right? Not blipped dead. I just point this out because that sword agent behind them is loving this sitcom. Forget the Jimmy Woo parallels with me. I would totally be that guy. Oh, by the way, quick update that our merch partners, Epic Hero Labs, hit 10,000 subscribers, and that means they just gave away a PlayStation 5. Check it out. So we're just uh, calling to let you know that you uh, you just won a PlayStation 5. No way. Yes. Way. Now, there are still nine more PlayStation 5s to go, so keep on entering by subscribing to Epic Hero Labs and going to epicheroshop.com slash giveaway to officially enter. We'll announce a new winner every 10,000 subscribers right here. But speaking of our merch partners, I am wearing our WandaVision-inspired latest obsession shirt, which you can find at newrockstarsmerch.com or epicheroshop.com. It's got some cool augmented reality Easter eggs, and it's a limited edition, which means it's not like the real Vision who seemingly cannot die. When this shirt is gone, it is gone. Head to newrockstarsmerch.com to grab Grab this shirt or a New Rockstars beanie or a New Rockstars coaster, all of which helps support this channel. So the sword operatives are able to ID the hearts as Todd and Sharon Davis. Sharon Davis is actually the name of an art director on WandaVision. Herb is John Collins, the name of another art director on the show. Actually, later, the 70s credits say produced by Leanne Patrick. She is a post-production supervisor for the show. It's fun. All the names of the cast and crew are names of actual crew working for Marvel. Norm is Abolash Tandon. And if you look closely at the notes on his form, Abolash expressed his concern for his father and sister. This information was obtained when Vision awakened him. Is Wanda controlling the whole town? Physical safety of residents is now in question. When Vision restores him, Avalash becomes Norm again. Well, hold on. Vision awakened him? When did this happen? Was this a lost episode? It kind of sounds like what Vision does to Agnes in trailer footage. <laughs> I did. No. If this is based on House of M, Vision might be playing a kind of Wolverine role, awakening warped person after warped person within this alternate reality until the walls come crumbling down. Agnes gets pinned to the board, but no New Jersey ID was found for her, suggesting she might not be a true Westview victim, but someone working with the darker forces to manipulate Wanda. Dottie is also missing, but you know, this is still a work in progress. Her photo isn't at all on the wall. They might not have printed out her photo yet, but a lot of people are thinking she might also be a kind of key to Westview. Some people are saying she is playing Clea. Now, of course, everyone's talking about this. Jimmy Woo's notes are clearly meta jokes about the questions we have literally been asking. This is wild. Our video titles and thumbnails have been asking about hexagons. Why sitcoms? Vision alive or not? But there's a lot of details here. The board mentions a five mile radius, which might explain why exterior stuff outside of Westview, like those Eastview cops and the highway sign remain warped as well. And then under the possible perpetrators of this, scrolls. Yes! This confirms that Jimmy Woo and all these feds know that Skrulls exist. Now, Jimmy brings them up as possible antagonists, which contradicts the friendly relationship with the Skrulls shared by Nick Fury and the Rambos. While many Skrulls are friendly, it does sound like some authorities view parts of the Skrull race as a threat. They try to contact Wanda. So, you've seen that radio on Wanda's kitchen counter, right? The next time she's washing dishes, which by my count happens about once an episode, barf. Barf, nice little shout out to Stark's hollow projection tech that I hope is not part of this. But also, once per episode, how many episodes have they seen? Based on their footage of Monica from that 60s era, there are other lost episodes, so can we see them please? Now from Darcy's point of view, Dottie's whole glass shatter from episode two is totally skipped over. Wanda, can you hear me? I'm here to help. Pop quiz, Wanda. 
housewife get a blood stain out of Wait. one limit. This happens later with Monica's expulsion. So who is editing this feed? I'm thinking it might just be Wanda herself based on the way she patches that hole in her house. But still, we know there are some elements of this reality that Wanda cannot control. We also see the beekeeper moment. His cable turns into a jump rope, but we don't see what happens to him when Wanda rewinds. Some believe he might've been warped into that ice cream guy from episode three, but that was a different actor than Zach Henry. They normally don't like change their faces. I just assume he might've been reversed back out through that sewer tunnel. And and the aspect ratio widens as Wanda ejects Monica, using her red chaos magic to smash her through the living room, the nursery, the outside fence, and the whole Westview border. So that's one, two, three, four. Wanda literally broke Monica through the fourth wall. Then in case your pants are too dry. <sighs> <sighs> Even more unsettling than the gray corpse vision from Infinity War, it's the fact that he just reverts to normal with a simple cut back. Like nothing happened, and thus can happen again any fing time we cut back to him. <sighs> but this tells us that the version of vision that exists in the real world is, as Darcy said, dead, dead. He is a corpse that Wanda could be trying to reanimate with sorcery. So if he has been a corpse the whole time, does that mean that Wanda banged a robot corpse in episode two? Hold on to your dead horse is necrophiles. You nasty. I don't think all these people are being ragdolled around with just like sitcom -y sleeves over them. It's more like once you're in the bubble, all of reality within this bubble shifts as a whole. Like your whole body rematerializes to be whatever Wanda imagines you to be, wherever she wants you to be, doing whatever she wants you to do. But yeah, vision is dead, folks. And I think Westview's hexagonal shape tells us that this is a town-wide hex spell, all to try to resurrect vision's corpse, you using the cosmic radiation from Wanda's Infinity Stone activated powers, maybe further enhanced by the recent shockwaves of the same kind of cosmic radiation. And despite Monica saying, it's all Wanda, I think Jimmy Woo's whole missing person mystery being the start of all this tells us that Wanda is not doing this alone. At least Agnes and someone else, maybe Ralph, they want her to be doing this. Jimi Hendrix's voodoo child plays over the credits, a nod to the true witchcraft at play here but watch Vision's eyes in the final seconds he is nervously looking over at Wanda and then his head lowers but his eye line raises over the TV he is looking at us he wants out Hey, uh, by the way, now that we're not getting episodes early, the fastest we can get these videos out are Inside Marvel episodes Friday midday, breakdowns on Saturdays. It's kind of like uh, the coverage we did for The Mandalorian. This is how we always do it. But a new thing we're doing is that you can join our live tapings of Inside Marvel every Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific on Stereo. We will answer your questions in real time. It's fun. And don't worry, this is not delaying or replacing any of our YouTube content. It's just something extra that we're doing for you guys. You can join us at Stereo.com slash New Rockstars. Follow me on Instagram at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars on YouTube for breakdowns of all your WandaVision what the fucks. See you next week when WandaVision makes fun of our brand spots for Aqua Socks.